Well, hello, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. I'm here at the beautiful club at Mediterra, Naples, Florida. Today's key is a really good one. Today's subject, how to square the club consistently at impact. I'll show you three things I think you really have to do. And we'll give you some special little hints and drills associated with each one. Well, before we jump in with how to square the club face consistently at impact, if you're new to the channel or perhaps you've watched the videos before but have never subscribed, would love to have you do that. The little red subscribe button there helps us build the channel, helps us get you free content. And if you'll hit the small bell next to that, you'll be notified every time we have a new video coming out to help you with your golf. Thanks. Key number one, you must be pretty much in control of the shaft at impact. It has to be fairly stable. Here's Lydia Ko. We'll give the ladies a look. Now, she's certainly releasing it. She's got some speed there, but watch this club at impact. It's pretty stable for at least six, eight inches. John Rahm there, again, he's got control of that club for a split second there. So that's key number one. If you have no control of the shaft, if it's bouncing around, you're going to hit wild shots. Well, before we get into key number one, which we'll do momentarily, and I don't want to rain on your parade here, but the, the club face control isn't totally isolated. Going to give you some good keys, but just remember your subconscious mind is doing who knows how many thousands of things in this one or two seconds. And the more free as the more the less it's devoted to certain things the more it can manage the club face and direction what i mean by that the simpler your golf swing is if your body angles are changing and your balance isn't very good if your club's moving around a lot and you're having to correct for it subconsciously you are not going to be able to devote as much of your attention in that split second to to squaring the club face up and frankly the more unstable everything is the less likely you are to control it anyway so it doesn't happen in a vacuum we're gonna have a very very quick look at how a great player does that a very quick look and then we'll jump out and we'll start working on that stable shaft key one let's have a look at justin thomas super successful player watch his body there against the trees and the lake and the tea just use those as a reference and you look he's moving dynamically and freely but you look how steady that torso is in terms of its angle he has a fairly upright plane but that club is really consistent on a consistent stable loop there's no real shenanigans going on with the golf club there and you'll hit the ball solidly as well as control the club face if you do this by the way we have a free course three parts detailed video course on solid strike formula just go out down into the description box to pick up your free copy all right before we move to key number two which is a really important one let's have a little look at fleshing out key number one that stability of shaft hey listen you've got to practice it on a small scale to get it here's the drill i would recommend trying to hit little punch shots with some speed and then hold quickly and here's the feeling you've got to have in your wrist at least here's what has to happen you have to feel it how you have to feel it your lead wrist has to be forward and your trail wrist hand has to be applying pressure so you've got to practice that feeling let's do a couple little ones and we'll give you some variables right there so I felt like I could really bring the club to a stop that involves using your core that involves transferring energy to the club but stability in those arms firming up to hold the shaft you know people say about even grip pressure throughout the swing I don't believe that at all if you don't firm up a little bit we're not talking a sudden drastic squeeze of the hands but if you don't firm up a bit squeeze a bit that club's too heavy to control and the feeling I really had there that I like so much was the feeling that I felt the pressure in the back wrist and the bowing of the front wrist there one more of these Again, nice solid shot you're gonna have to camp out with this a little bit don't just jump into full swings if you haven't reasonably mastered this already you still need a bit of release and a bit of pop but it's got to firm up at the bottom okay key number two if you're gonna square that club face up consistently you have to have a grip that works for you now certainly we have videos on the grip here at the channel it must be down towards the fingers kind of diagonally across it under that pad but let's look at the rotation of this lead arm because that's so so important because where you begin has quite a determination on how easily you can square the club face so here's a little drill get in an athletic position like you're guarding someone at basketball or whatever and just get set and just see how your lead arm looks some people look a lot more like this some people more like that something in between if you're close to that that's my recommendation now listen you could play with almost any kind of a rotation and grip if you can make that work for you that's okay but it's easiest if it's more of a natural position so find that spot relax your hand let it get in the fingers a little bit there 
and just see if you feel more or less that same sense in your lead forearm. The more neutral for your physiology that position is, the more easily I think you can manipulate the club and kind of get it square for yourself. One other little tip before we move on here as well, don't forget squaring the club face, let me come to the camera, is not this if you're trying to close it. It's turning the face towards the ground. Again, that firms up that wrist. Practice that one time. Do that, look down there, push your hips a bit. You've got a square club face with the handle forward a little bit you, when you do that. And you may say, well, geez, when I look at the Tour Pros, I see a lot of release over here. Try it one time. Turn the face down, turn your shoulders through a little, your trunk through a little bit. Let the club release slightly. You see how you don't see those knuckles. Most people slashing at it, the left hand just cups. It doesn't turn the face down. Okay. Let's move on. Well, three number key, you guessed it, skill. Listen, you can, let's say balance, for example. You can read about balance, but until you, let's say a bicycle, until you get on there and work at it, you're not gonna be able to balance on a bike. So you have to play around a little bit to develop skill. Now get something like a six iron. I would I often I recommend people practice things as wedges and nine irons on this particular skill. The reason is when you have less loft on the club, a little variance in the club face will produce a bigger spread in direction. Now here's what we're going to do. You decide on your own scale, but I would start on a small scale and by the way, let's say a little child to walk. Do they get it right first time? Of course they don't. They make big mistakes, but they make big mistakes on both sides falling over being the big mistake. So you've got to do it on a wide scale, vary this thing before you can begin to do it on a narrow scale. So here's what I'm going to suggest. Get a six on or a five or something like that. Get just a moderate size backswing. Very key that you obey two features though when you vary the right and the left. Let me hit one. I'm going to make this ball go right. You can see that ball shoot off to the right. When you hit it to the right, don't do it by fanning the face open so much. Do it with the feeling that the heel of the club is ahead of the toe a little bit. And I, I realize that more or less means an open face, but it's different to just twisting the club like that. Do it in this sense so you have control over the shaft. And when you do it to the left, same thing, but turn the shaft as we said earlier. So we're not getting into a wildly handsy feel. It's just a sense of where the face is. A difference to be sure, but with that nice forward lean of the shaft. So let's try another one here. This time I'm setting up square and make this ball go to the left. I do a little bit bigger scale there. Huge low hook. Now you'll be able to do it at a medium scale where you can really move it each side. Until you can do that, you're not ready for fine tune. And again, this whole process teaches the brain where neutral is. That's the key. Plus it helps you shape shots. Another thought for this, if you're, let's say you tend to hit the ball to the left, but you become adept at least on the driving range at medium speed, making the ball go to the right with club face control. When you get out on the golf course and you don't have a whole bucket to recover with, you start struggling, hit a few balls to the left, you'll know roughly what feel to grab onto to try to recover. You can, make a, you can make a quick recovery back out there on the golf course. So build skill, do this. And remember, of course, if you start to get unsolid contact, if you lose control of the club, go back to one and two, make sure it's stable, check your grip a little bit again, then cycle back. You can have some fun with this. You can solve it and learn to control the club face, hit straight shots consistently. Well, I hope you found that helpful with how to square the club face consistently at impact. Please hit the thumbs up button if you like the video. Again, helps us build some momentum at the channel. We appreciate you watching. And I'm telling you just the last word of encouragement. You can learn to do this if you cycle through these things and you're patient, you enjoy the process and you take time to work at it a little bit. You can build skill and become much better at squaring the club face at impact. Thanks again.